Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's New Stand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is April 26, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits with high hopes. Uh, as for me, I am, let's say, doing all right. I'm doing pretty good. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Food Corner, I did weirdly wind up making it interesting. I uh, had some pea soup for the first time. I guess it was split pea soup to be uh, precise. And I got to say, I, I looked at it and I was like, wait, I got this soup. Huh? I've not. And I knew I got it because I never had it before. And I was just feeling adventurous. And I'm like, man, I must have been so high. I must have been so high at the Kroger getting this shit. And I, I pour it out. It's just like thick green. I'm just like, oh, man, this is not looking good. Uh, so, excuse me, I make that with a salad and a bagel. You know me, I love a good bagel, <laughs> love a good schmear. Uh, so I put this all together. I also got to add though, I did season the shit out of this soup. It is like, just like reflex. I'm like, oh my gosh, so let's gotta, let's gotta make it at least taste as good as we possibly can. And I also thought to myself, I bet bacon in the soup would be so good here. And, um, but I didn't do that. So, I, you know, I just seasoned it, whatever. Because I'm like, I don't want to waste bacon if it's bad. So I finally get to try it. And I got to say, I I enjoyed it. I was surprised. Like, the texture of the, the pea was almost like a bean and it was so I was like oh this is just like bean soup and I don't like beans so like all right cool also with the seasoning it kind of hit really well um so yeah I I, I wound up having a nice little soupy uh dinner <laughs> so that was yummo other than that I've had like a microwave burrito from work and we had uh the cone which is like an ice cream place around here local nice spot that came through and gave us all a bunch of ice cream so that was cool uh so let's see let's go ahead and get into some news do a little coverage commentary uh from the associated press taliban kill mastermind of suicide bombing at kabul airport uh so this was an unexpected update from you know i i didn't expect it at least uh a ground assault by the taliban killed the Islamic State militant who spearheaded the August 2021 suicide bombing at the Kabul airport that left 13 U.S. troops and about 170 Afghans dead during the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, U.S. officials said. So this apparently, at least according um, you know to us, and I believe also the Taliban we didn't have any involvement. This was an, a whole um, Afghan, Afghan um, operation, or Taliban o- operation, I should say. And uh, we knew about it, I think, a few weeks ago. And now that we can say with high confidence uh, that it's this is the guy, like we confirm it, but they haven't said the person's name. I don't really know why that is, what security reason that would be, or what have you, but they're withholding that. So... I was like, okay, shit, that, that's a big development. This was a, a huge moment, obviously, just because, I mean, we were in the middle of this very crazy withdrawal. Um, uh, it was already, like, you know, things were already on, like, edge. Uh, and then this bombing takes place. And, um, it, you know, I think it was, th- it was something that was in headlines for at least a few weeks Obviously, a lot of the Republicans, you know, talk about the whole withdrawal in general and say this was something that was like a big gaffe for Biden, big mistake. It's like impeachable even, even though this was something that Trump set up, whatever. Um, So, yeah, I mean, this is a big update. That being said, I don't really know if there's that much else really worth adding. Uh, I mean, obviously, the the article goes through some of the details about, you know, like the Islamist State Khorasan or the ISIS-K. Um, how like this was a, you know, a division of the Taliban or whatever. And, um, you know, they're just more extreme and, you know, they wanted to do this act and 
the Taliban then wanted to, I guess, you know, clamp on it. And also, I believe this person died in the middle of fighting. So this has like been like weeks long fighting that had taken place and he winds up getting uh, killed in it. So, so, yeah, that's that's about all the major stats, highlights from that. Let's see here from Good Morning America. Dozens dead, hundreds missing in Kenya starvation cold case. An ongoing investigation into a suspected religious cult in southeastern Kenya whose followers were allegedly told to starve themselves has led to the discovery of dozens of bodies. Uh, Let's see. I think the total now has reached 90 as of Tuesday. I think when I first heard it was like in the 60s. So, I mean, it's 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 a lot. Um, The police, uh, the Kenyan police have found more remains across this um, 800 acre forest in the village of Shakola near the coastal town of Malindi. Uh, Let's see here. The leader of this uh, cult. Uh, Let me see if I can pull his name up here. Uh, the victims are all believed to be followers of Paul Nahinge McKenzie and his self-proclaimed Good News International Church. Uh, McKenzie actually owned the land, and he was accused of luring his, his followers um, and instructing them to observe fasting till death in order to meet their maker. So essentially, he's like, hey, guys, we can just speed run the whole, the whole process, and you just, just starve yourself, and you will... We will go to the great beyond. And so it's just like this. I just I can't imagine going through that process. And also, I got to add some of the people who, you know, were rescued and they were saved. Obviously, you know, there's some people who who died in hospital. But then also on top of that, there are people who are saying, no, I don't want any food. I don't want any nutrition. Like, no, I'm trying to do I'm trying to complete my my goal here. Like, they, they fully believe they are devout for McKenzie. And that's so fucking sad. Uh, let's see. McKenzie has a criminal record dating back to 2017. He was arrested last month in connection with the starvation deaths of two children. But he was subsequently released on bail of 10,000 Kenyan shillings, about 75 U.S. dollars, according to Coombe. So, I mean, this is someone who has a literal criminal record for doing this stuff, and he just wasn't going to stop. There are also, I believe, other people who are being charged. Um, Let's see. Uh, That's really all I have here for now that I wanted to cover. We'll see if there's any more developments. Uh, But just really unfortunate ass shit. I I feel like I don't cover too many cults. Obviously, though, they're uh, definitely a thing. I know, no, no, we've covered at least one on here. The guy who's, like, carrying around a whole fucking family. He, like, he was having sex with, like, a van. That shit was crazy. So, I mean, you know, they, they are very fascinating, but obviously in this, like, a kind of, like, morbid way. And, um, you know, I'm always like, oh, shit. And then I get into the details and I feel so bad because it's just, like, I get it. Like, these are people who are making a decision on faith they're making a choice on faith and like and not to mention it's not just them and a lot of times it's them and their family members they all make this commitment and it's to a person like this that's mckenzie guy and you know you just literally wind up throwing your fucking life away it's very fucking sad oh let's see not that we are moving to any lighter news but we will be moving to npr Uh, Donald Trump's civil rape case goes to trial in Manhattan. Uh, So, yeah, Trump is, uh, you know, a lot of his campaign is going to be dealing with some cases, dealing with with some accusations. Uh, Let's see. Lawyers from former lawyers for former President Donald Trump and E. Jean Carroll, the woman who has accused him of raping her. Also, uh, sorry, uh, trigger warning, sexual assault. To say that before I got here, uh, uh, accused him of raping her in an upscale Manhattan department store in the mid 1990s, presented diametrically opposing accounts of what did or did not happen to a jury on Tuesday, the first day of uh, trial in Carroll's civil suit against Trump. 
Uh, so, you know, both the lawyers kind of go back and forth about the story. Uh, just to kind of, I guess, you know, go into it. Essentially, um, Crowley described Trump locking Carol inside a changing room and forcing her into sexual intercourse, even as she resisted. Uh, Crowley said now, nearly three decades later, Carol is trying to hold Trump accountable for what he did to her in that dressing room and restore her good name. Uh, she also has, on alongside this civil suit, a uh, defamation case that hasn't gone to trial. I don't know if it hasn't gone to trial yet or it just won't. Um, but also adding that there's no uh, video or forensic evidence to support the rape claim. Also, that Carol is not certain uh, whether the assault took place in 1995 or 1996. That is something that uh, Trump's legal team is saying, like, this is a big, um, like, a big, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Hole in Carol's case and the sense that, like, you can't even give an exact date. So in that regard, how can Trump defend himself and even give an alibi. And um, they're trying to say that um, this is a he said, she said situation, which Crowley is like more or less saying, no, that's not what this is. Also, um, Carol's uh, allegations are also supported by the testimony of two friends of Carol, um, who she told shortly after the alleged assault, with key details being backed up by two witnesses who worked at uh, Bergdorf Goldman's. So this will definitely be a very interesting case to see how it's going to fall out. Obviously here, you know, personally, I, I do believe that you should believe women. Uh, I think that is the best way to start uh, when it comes to these things. Now, that being said, when we are going to hold something up to like the legal standards or yada, 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 all that fucking bullshit, that is when, you know, especially when you have a very rich you know, strong defense team that Trump has, they are going to be on the offensive like this the whole the whole case, trying to poke holes in whatever the fuck they can to try to make this um, not airtight, to give at least enough reasonable doubt, enough reason to make you say and think, oh, well, maybe she is just making it up. I think a big thing that they're trying to say that she's just doing this for like money uh, this isn't, like, this isn't anything but, like, a hit job kind of situation. So that's, that's how, uh, Trump's legal team is trying to play, uh, play this. Also, it's to be added that Trump himself is not there, just, uh, his legal team. Uh, the, I guess since this is, like, a civil, uh, suit, he doesn't have to show up. Uh, that being said, too, another thing that I found interesting was how, um, they did the the jury selection. It's like very anonymous. They're doing like like the you don't know obviously who they are. Uh, they are coming and going uh, to undisclosed locations. They're getting dropped off at different times in different spots of uh, the courthouse or whatever, different drop off points and stuff. So this is being very like uh, guarded, secure. I don't know, I guess, I, I mean, I didn't hear that about the arraignment case, I don't, or the arraignment situation for the other shit that he's been involved in, uh, so I don't know, I thought that was an interesting add-on that NPR brings up in the article, so yeah, I mean, we will see how this goes, uh, obviously, I'm rooting against Trump every time, all the time, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's not hard for me to do that, that's like a static motion, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and I do hope that, you know, Crowley, you know, is going to get her chance to really defend herself. Because I, I think that's a really important part about this is saying, hey, like, she's tried to say, like, oh, I'm not his type. Like, in, in, in essence, that like, oh, well, she's not pretty enough for him to even go for her. And it's like, that's the craziest fucking shit. And it's all it's I don't know. To me, it's just very bad behavior that you see out of men. Like, oh, like, that's not even my kind of girl, bro. She's trash, bro. Like, I don't know. It's just disgusting, chauvinist ass bullshit. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do want to see how this unfolds, and I will keep you posted. All right, we got one more thing to go. This is a actual another update. Uh, let's see. You know, I'm gonna take my break, and then we'll finish this off. Let's light this candle.
Oh yeah. Mm. All right. From the Associated Press, Montana transgender lawmaker barred by GOP from House floor. Whew. Montana Republicans barred transgender lawmaker Zoe Zephyr from the House floor for the rest of the 2023 session on Wednesday in retaliation for her rebuking colleagues and then participating in protests after they voted to ban ban gender-affirming care for children. So, kind of a bit of a, I guess, a correction. I wasn't sure from how I read the last article if this was specifically about children or about it in general. Honestly, I, I feel like, you know, Zoe, she's defending the shit just period. And as she should, I think that's important that you do have someone fighting for this shit. Um... I, I also said, too, that I feel like this is a very tactful situation uh, by conservative lawmakers here from Montana. I think they really read the room from Tennessee and they said, OK, we don't want to be drastic, even though we do have this like far right caucus who is like bang for blood. They refuse to use Zephyr's proper pronouns. They want this to just be like, oh, they said she said blood is on our hands. Well, we're censoring her. She can't talk. She cannot talk. She cannot speak in this room and this this in this establishment. It, to me, it is ridiculous. It's not even a tit for tat. This is a, a person. This is a, a, a const- like a person who is a lawmaker like you. She represents eleven thousand people. She's there for a reason. Like, and I, I do feel like it's very petty in terms of how they're saying, like, how she participated in the protest. It's a, a lot like how they're trying to say how, um, what is it? How one of the lawmakers from the Tennessee thing brought up a, a bullhorn. They didn't use it. He didn't use it, but because of that situation, they're like, oh, you were doing something that broke house rules. That broke blah, 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 blah. That's why you're expelled. With the situation with Zoe... She is defending herself, essentially saying why she's not going to apologize to these people. And she then proceeds to, like, hold up her mic because people are saying, let her speak. Let her speak. And because of that, they're saying, well, that, that, that wraps it up right there. That's all the reasons we need. And because of that, she's not allowed to speak for the remainder of the session. Um, Once again, I'm saying this is tactful because... It, it allows them to do their quote unquote business as usual, a term that has been used before um, by other lawmakers when they just want to say like, ah, we're sweeping this issue under the rug. We don't really care about you and yours. We care about our little status quo that we're maintaining. So they're just going to do this. And what is the blowback? Like now I got to say, I will say something that of a silver lining here, something that I was excited about last time I covered this was I felt like there wasn't that much support. Like, I remember seeing, once again, referencing the Tennessee thing, there were people out in droves. Like, they came out, they were there, and they were, you could hear them. You could hear them in the other room, out in the lobby, like, yelling, upset. And, like, it was good to see that here in Montana. Um, You know, for what that is worth. Also, I believe seven people were arrested, uh, which... You know, that's why I think they're also saying that, like, Zephyr incited this protest that led to this, like, unlawful shit and yada, yada, yada. Um, So, yeah, I I generally feel that Zephyr is fighting for what's right here. I think that, look, you are a part of this fabric. Like, yeah, they want to just move on and just say, hey, we did the thing. But, like, no, like, what you did wasn't right. It wasn't okay. And she's going to keep saying that it's not okay. And to just try to mute her mic, which is literally what they did in that situation when she held it up, um, I I don't think that's right. I think she should have a chance to speak just like every other lawmaker in that room just because you don't like what she has to say. Well, too fucking bad. That is the process. That is the democracy that we're all supposed to be signed up for, right? (sighs) So that's it. That's all I got. That's the end of the episode. I thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Let's see. If you'd like to support 
every every patron every uh you know th- it all helps it's all it, it, i appreciate it the love um the doll hairs it, it, it it's great um but yeah patreon.com slash isaiah news uh five dollars a month it gets you access to all of my bonus content so every episode i do in terms of like i pretty much like every monday I at least put up one episode just for y'all just for my newsies uh also you get a hot link to the discord i'm always trying to grow that i really would like to have a space where people can just come through and like talk about news talk about fun shit talk about all kinds of stuff uh, gotta say, not much action, not much traction, uh, lately, but that being said, I'm just happy that there's at least a few people there, you know, and hopefully I can grow that and make it bigger. Womp, womp, womp. Also, the, like I said, the Discord, though, is free, uh, it's just, it's a quicker process, I guess, like, I think you get, like, an email or something with the patron, Patreon, whatever, but that being said, um, not only is it easier to interact with me with the Patreon, uh, also, you become a doozy, like I, like I said earlier, and I do a little newsy roll call, and once a month, I'll say your name on the pod, and then also, I'll shout out a little project that maybe you're doing. Also, I prioritize any news you want to, like, throw me or send me, but I will say, if you just talk to me about news, I'm, my eyes will light up, I'll start texting fast, whatever. I get so, I, I froth at the mouth. Ugh, it's bad. I'm, 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 I need help. <laughs> I'm addicted. But that being said, always send me some news. Talk to me about news. Uh, free ways to hit me up and just talk to me in general, though. Uh, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Also, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. All the homies, all the newsies, they know this. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, hopefully, I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.